Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for the third episode of Let's Make a Game in Game Maker Studio 2. First and foremost, it is a tutorial series and it's quite unlikely that it's going to be finished because making a game takes a long, long time and there's a lot of complexity to it. But anyways, we're going to go on as far as we can, as long as we have ideas and as long as we have the skills to actually program what we want to achieve. In the beginning of today's episode, I want to fix a couple of things. So first of all, let's go ahead and open up the global variables. I think I want to make a separate script for the world generation, actually. So I think that's what I'm going to do right away. Script world generation. There we go. And we want to switch that up so that we can write some code in it. Well, the code is actually already here and I adapted it very, very slightly in order to prevent a potential mistake from happening. You guys mentioned that in the comments section. We don't need this anymore. But what I did is I added a if statement. So if the place is actually free where we want to plant the tree, for instance, only then we're going to plant it. So let's make sure we are also adding it to this statement right there. I want to make sure it's properly formatted. Anyway, so we got this out of the way and we do not have to clog up our global variable script for that. However, of course, we still have to put it on top of the player into the create event. So let's add the script right there. It is the world generation. Beautiful. I would actually like to have a random seed. I'm not sure how this is accomplished, but let's add random seed right here. And I need to have a look into the help for that. Okay, this function sets the seed to a random value, so this could be it. Let's just copy this over and add it right there. Another thing I would like to have, uh, player actions. I would like to have a button, a temporary button to restart the room. I'm just going to call this room restart and we're going to say if keyboard check. Now let's see, um, let's add the backspace. I think that's a good key. So if we hit the backspace, then we want the room to restart. Can we do that? Yeah, room restart. It's actually a function in here. Great, so this should already work out. Let's test it. Ah, yeah, we can clearly see the seat is a different one. And if I hit the backspace, then we should always get a different seat. And theoretically, no two objects should spawn on top of each other. If they do spawn on top of each other, then we will have one less of these objects. Okay, great. So far, so good. We are going to take care of the harvesting later on. I do not want to have wood in my inventory immediately. What I want is if we destroy a tree, then wood is going to pop up on the floor. And the same thing with the rock. So what we basically need is additional sprites and soon enough we should also categorize all of these items so we can keep the overview. But for now I'm just gonna call this sprite log. So this is gonna represent a single log and I think we can make this a little bit smaller than one tile. Let's actually see, uh, could we go as far as do a 16 by 16 for all the items that we get? Now, once again, I'm going to do this very simplistically. I just want to make sure that we kind of touch each of the sides here. Okay, there we go. That is good enough. At least we can kind of see what it is. Of course, as per usual, all graphics are temporary, guys. We need functionality. That's the interesting part about this series. Making sprites, we can dedicate a couple of episodes to that, where I will try to do a better job. But for now, that is going to do the trick. So we have our logs and I also would like to add the same thing for the rocks. So we already have a rock, but this time we want stone to drop on the floor. We also switch that up to 16 by 16 and draw some kind of a stone. Let me do that. There we go. We got our stone and we got our logs. I couldn't be happier. I don't want to make a collision mask for those. I also don't want to make them solid. However, I do want to make an object out of them. So let's do this. Object log and you're gonna have the log sprite obviously and we're gonna do the same thing for the object stone We're just gonna have the stone sprite good now We need to switch things up in the player actions. We have our harvesting section right here So once we harvest trees what we want is not to add inventory wood But we want to spawn a couple of wood pieces all around the tree So for the time being I just comment this out and I guess we need to set up a variable such as amount logs. And of course, we're going to take this calculation right here in order to know what this value should be. 
the yield trees we have set up in the global variables. So we can change that if we want. At the moment, it's up to four logs. So now that we have that, we basically have to do a for loop in order to spread the logs around the tree. So we're going to say for i equals zero. And as long as i is smaller than the amount of logs that I have set, then we want to i plus plus. What do we want to do within this loop? We want to instance create on our layer and for the time being we want to do that at the same spot where the tree is so it's gonna be x and y the layer of course is still our object layer and then the object itself is gonna be object log right maybe i should define this a little bit better object log doesn't seem specified enough i'm gonna do object item log so items are things that we can actually pick up and I'm going to do the same thing with the stone right here. Object item stone. So we also have to change that here. Object item log. Great stuff. So now it's going to create a couple of logs on the floor that we eventually can pick up. Let's actually see if that already works. We are going towards a tree. We are felling it. And there we go. We have the logs. Now, of course, we cannot pick up the logs just yet. We haven't built in that functionality. And we also don't know how many logs are there actually. So now I'm going to do the same thing with the rocks and then I want to find the proper way to kind of distribute them around the tree so that they don't overlap each other. And you can clearly see how many locks are on the floor. Uh, but let me think about that just very briefly. All right, guys, I think I came up with a temporary solution that we can go for that is satisfactory. What happens now if I harvest the tree is we will be getting logs evenly spread out and the point of origin is now also the tree. That's something I had to fix, but I'm going to explain everything in the code. What we can do now is just walk up to one and the nearest one we can pick up at a certain range. So as you can see, that gave us four logs. If we go ahead and do another tree, we can do the same thing and we get two additional logs from this one. Now, let's have a look at that within the code. What I did is I swapped around quite a few things and I also made a new section, the pickup section. Now, in order to not confuse you, we're going to completely rewrite the code for the harvest rock functionality. So you don't have to read through that yourself. I'm going to do the same thing with the rocks. There is essentially nothing different about it just yet. Maybe there's going to be a difference once we add tools such as pickaxes and so on. Also, I added variables in the global variable script, namely these two variables. So we have now a harvest range that we can swap for each of the actions the player can do. And we also have a pickup range, which is much shorter. So for stuff that's laying on the floor that you can simply pick up without the tool. So let's search for the nearest rock in order to smack it down into pieces. And we want to do the nearest instance functionality away from the player. And it's the world rock thingy majingy. Next up we're going to hit the space bar in order to smash it into bits and pieces that is still the same as we did previously so I'm not going to explain too much about it. Nearest rock we want to smash but this time we're not going to go with a flat value of 5. We're going to use the dynamic value of harvest range we set up in the global variables. So far so good we are familiar with this code now is where it's going to change. What we want to do is we want to spawn a couple of stone pieces. So let's set this up. The amount of stone that is going to be dropped is the mathematical function we set up previously. We're going to use the yield rocks probably. And yeah, that's what I probably named it. But let's just make sure in the global variables yield rocks. Yeah, there we go. Up to five stone we can harvest from one rock. Now that we know how many stone pieces we're going to drop from this rock, we want to destroy the rock, but also spawn the stone. And we're going to do all of that with a with functionality. So we're going to write the code on the rock we're currently destroying. So with the nearest rock, we first of all want to instance destroy, of course. Now, even though we're destroying it right now, it's still going to finish all of the code that is following right now. We're going to set up a for loop depending on how many items we want to drop. This is going to be important. So for i equals zero, and as long as i is smaller than the amount of stone we set up previously. Now the problem is this variable is actually on the player itself, where this variable is not on the player. So this is not going to work. But since we are within a with statement, we can simply say other amount stone. So it's going to address a variable on the other instance, which is the player. And of course, we want to say i++. 
Now for each cycle, we want to create an instance on our layer, but we want to do this in a way so they line up and don't overlap each other. So instead of just x, we're gonna say x plus i times 16, which is the amount of pixels my items will have. The Y is just going to be Y and of course it's going to be on the objects layer. Now once we want to do this a little bit more intelligently, we might add a random value to this. So it looks as though they are dropping randomly on the floor and not lining themselves up perfectly. But for now that is going to be fine and of course we want to spawn the item stone in this case. Great, so now we already set up the functionality to spawn in the rocks. If we look at that right here, we should be able to see that two rocks for this bad boy. We got uh, five rocks for this one, but I can still not pick up the rocks and get it into my inventory. So let's set this up by adding the pickup lines. The pickup functionality needs to be on the top. This is why I have it here and not below the harvest part. If you have it below the harvest... If you have a below the harvest part, then you're gonna pick up one of the logs right when you harvest it. And I first want to drop stuff on the floor and then we pick it up. So if we pick things up first per frame, then we're not gonna run the risk of doing both actions at the same time, if you get my drift. Anyways, let's set up a title for the stone. And of course we want to set up a new variable for the nearest stone, which is instance nearest x, y, object, item, stone. Stone. There we go. And now that we have this variable, we can say if keyboard check released VK space as per usual. We want to pick things up with space. And we're also going to set up a distance to object to the nearest stone should be less than my range that I set up, which is the pickup range. At the moment, that is just one pixel. So you need to be right on top of it. Now that we've done that, we want to destroy the log and actually add something to the inventory. So I'm going to set this up like that. I'm also going to change the title here on the top to be consistent. So what we want to do is go and do a script on top of the nearest stone object, which is a simple destroy functionality. Now outside of the with statement, we want to add this to our inventory. So inventory stone plus equals one piece. And that should be the whole shebang. Theoretically, let's test it out. We're gonna go to a rock, we're gonna smack it into pieces and pick one up. And there we go, we actually get one rock. So we can pick them up individually. And we also do not run the risk of picking them all up at once. So if I hover over a couple of them, I can only pick up one, which is the nearest. Yeah, okay, this seems to be working out great. I think that is enough for one episode. We refined the harvesting functionality. And as you can see, we just start simple and add more and more detail to it. Maybe we're gonna set up uh, different scripts for each of these functionalities so that we don't run a script of a thousand lines or so. We can organize ourselves pretty well. But anyways, with that, we're gonna leave it be. Thank you so much for watching, have a great time, and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.